so I would like to ask your take on wages. I would defer to you, obviously, but in my estimation, most of the wage gains are behind us. The reason why I say that is because, or the, or the line share, when you look at the chart of, I think the Cleveland Fed might do this, job switchers versus job stayers, and you deconstruct the wage gains. The job switchers chart, as we all, the great, was it the great resignation? Whatever it was, the job switchers chart went parabolic. And then it came all the way back down. So what would cause, now they might they might stay elevated, but what would cause, again, a potential re-acceleration? Like haven't employers uh, digested most of Are that? We're going to have these the quiet quitting stuff continue. Nah, the I jolt, don't think the so. jolt spikes. Hey, guess what? Guess what? So the, my train today was packed, 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 packed. WeWork is going out of business. Amazon just put out a really, not nasty, a, a pretty aggressive letter and come back to the office uh, a lot of these these office property REITs are doing pretty well off the lows. People are coming back to work. Yeah, sure. Well, isn't the biggest difference between now and the 70s that there was way more union power back then? And sure, there's some union power being exerted right now by some big companies, and that's happening, but nowhere near what we yeah, saw it's not back the then. Irishman. We're not blowing up taxi cabs. Yeah, but. yeah, but, but that's, I mean, inflation was double, you know, in the high yeah, double digits. Higher, then, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, I, I think the question is, can we see persistent 5% wage growth in this sort of environment so that's until, what you're asking, my, my right? until is, you start to see significant labor market weakness? And I think the answer is like, yes. Like, why wouldn't – what what about and – and this is what – when you get these inflationary shocks, right, the thing that determines – whether there's persistence is whether labor markets are tight and labor markets are tight. And if you who read my tweets on secularly a week, tight, secularly <laughs> tight every, every Thursday, labor market secularly totally tight. I'm a fan, <laughs> but, but my point is if employees were going to go to their employers and say, listen, I can't afford to live. Okay. Hasn't most of that been done? Uh, here's an analogy. No, but that's, but the, look at the level of real wages is down from where it was before. People are still, Behind. Understood. But employees, so we spoke all last year about how it was actually a good thing that for the first time in decades, labor had the upper hand over capital. That dynamic is changing with not that any employee is going to their employer. Hey, headline, not CP across the board. headline CPI is 9%. I want more money. But with, with inflation coming down significantly, they don't have the same leverage that they did a year ago. Uh, I mean, I think, first of all, the levels matter. They're still behind. And so they're still negotiating. And that takes time, years to Yeah, I'm not through. saying it's over. And number two is, it's. Tr I, I think people are often confused about the labor market. Like, we had a labor market 18 months ago that was like the equivalent of a labor market that was like a 2% unemployment rate. I mean, it was so hot, right? It was scorching hot. And so now we're looking at a labor market that's like, you know, hot, right? Tight. Right, you know, not 2022. Not 2022, which yeah. was the most extreme, yeah. tight, Hot so still, labor market so we've still ever too seen. Hot, but not extreme. Still too hot, but not as extreme. And okay. I think people are confusing the difference between you know those two levels. 